What's up, this is Malik Muhammad. You're watching Third and Longcorn. Make sure you like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another interview edition of Third and Longhorn. Today we have Malik Muhammad in the house. Malik, we're excited to have you, man. We always start this off the same way. I know you were one of the most highly recruited players in the entire nation, especially your position. And you had a lot of options. So why Texas? Uh, for me, like I'm a culture guy. Uh, so like just seeing Texas and uh, the bad runs they was having pre in the previous years. Um, and then like with the connections and stuff, um, with all they got, you know, UT being UT. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the prestigious university. Uh, so I really just wanted to change the culture uh, and do it like based in, in, in Texas, you know what I'm saying? At yeah. home. Yeah. So that was, that was the main reason. It's working. Malik, whenever I look at you, man, I see a guy that has unlimited potential, right? Super athletic, you got the range, you got the instincts. It made me think you played maybe a different position growing up. So I gotta ask you, <laughs> you, go. you know, growing up, what kind of was, was your role on your flag football or your little league football teams <laughs> that got you to Such a leading question. question. I mean, like growing up, I was like the fastest. Like I just hopped on the field, the fastest, running mm. around the track, the fastest. I mean, so the first position I played was running back. Oh, how <laughs> at your boy. So you telling me some of the best athletes around this is such a are setup. running yeah. Such a setup. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Wait, did you, did you wait, hear that? Wait, it sounds like you started off at running back, but your athleticism was too great, so you had to get moved on the edges, huh? Yeah. You was getting wasted at running back, right? No, 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 no. It, it, it sounds like he had potential to be able to play any position, but he decided. Yeah. It was his choice. It was his choice. It was his choice. That's what it was. It was his choice. His value right? was, it was your choice. He wasn't getting held back at the running back. He wasn't getting held back. If he played running back, he'd probably still be at Texas okay. toting that just damn for two hundred a, a game. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ain't that right? Yeah. That boy, that boy the man out in Dallas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Well, look, Malik, let me ask you this. I know um, I know. last season you enrolled early in January at Texas, and we kind of saw you get on the field early during the season and make some big impact plays. In your opinion, how did coming in early, like what advantages did you see with coming in early? Uh, Like getting the scheme down, uh, getting the speed of the game. Um, yeah, just getting adapted to college, uh, basically. Man, I think kid, um, young athletes coming into uh, universities early like you did, I think is really hard. What was the process like, meaning before that? Like, did you have to do anything special in high school or something? Like, when did you say, man, regardless of where it was going to be, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to college early. Like, that's a big deal to forego your, 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 your last semester in high school with all your friends and everybody and go to, you know, go – I mean, really be grown because you're off alone by yourself, uh, not far away from home, but still it's, it's, it's different from high school. So what was that process like before there? When did you know, like, hey, I, all right, this is what I need to do school wise to leave early? Uh, I'll say my junior year. OK. Uh, and like my future has always been my future. So like again, okay. past that was it was nothing like. Like doing what I had to do was was the only mindset that I had, mm. like getting there and doing it. Like, let's go. It ain't, it ain't no plan B, no nothing. Like, let's, let's go. So I'm glad you said that because last year when you first came in, I'm always intrigued on, uh, on true freshmen. Like, you know, who's a true freshman? You know, I'm trying to see. And they point guys out and, and they kept pointing you. I'm like, that's not a true, that's not a true freshman right there. Like, <laughs> you don't look like that. No, nah, not at all. Like, just the maturity level, especially on the field, man. You carry yourself well. Like, yeah. literally, like, I'm like a fly on the wall and I'm looking at you. Like Malik carries himself well. Is that is that your upbringing? Are you the oldest child? Where does that maturity come from? Especially playing cornerback, you need that maturity because mm -hmm. you got to have uh, that long, um, short term memory and being able to have tough skin out there at a young um, at a young young DB. Where does that come from? Definitely my upbringing. My dad, my uncles. I got older cousins that done played corner. Like, you okay. know, I got AJ Green, mm -hmm. Jabbar Muhammad, Kyrie Muhammad, like EJ Muhammad. Like, they all done. <laughs> yeah, they all. They all done played corner. Like, they all done, done been through it and did it. So, I mean, I'm just grabbing gems off of them, little nuggets off of them. Uh, and then my dad and them, I mean, they just. And just put it all together, and I just, man, I just got all the gems and put them, put it all together. I can I, tell. I love, uh, yeah. I love how you talked about that because that kind of paved the way for you to to where you're at now. And 
I get to travel to every single state championship game for high school. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there all the time. So I go out there a couple seasons ago and I see South Oak Cliff, mm -hmm. the Mecca, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Holding it down. They got a guy with some flashy cleats out there. They were the coldest <laughs> cleats I ever seen a high school player. First off, do you still have those cleats? I don't, no, I don't think oh, so. They, they was, explain the cleats first. I was going to say, I need, I need a visual uh, of what yeah. they look like. So, like, we was, we, we a black and gold team. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the whole season, like, I'm knowing we about to go back to state. So, the whole season, I'm thinking about, man, what I'm about to, what cleats I'm about, like, how I'm about to stand out at state. Sorry, no, I'm about to ball out. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. high school. Yeah. I'm like, what am I supposed to do for state? Like, what, what can I do to stand out? And then I just thought about some gold glitter cleats. Oh, man. And then state game, boom, sealed the game, pick six. Ooh. Yeah, man, it was crazy. Like, nah, they, they, they were crusted. Whole shoe was crusted. <laughs> Shine. Like, I was, in, I was in the box way up top. I was like, oh, he got some juice about himself. Oh, but uh, I say all that to say this is what culture was created at SOC where you look at the history, Dallas hadn't been able, in the inner city, hadn't been able to bring a state championship to their school or to that ISD. You were part of kind of a lasting generation, a legacy. Mm -hmm. What type of culture was created at SOC? And then how has that compared to what Coach Sark is creating and having some success in your freshman year at UT? That, that that's kind of what what played in this crazy like God that God made it happen. Mm -hmm. So like my freshman year at South Oak Cliff, we was like in in like it's something called Village Fair. Uh -huh. It's like a I can't even explain it like a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I just transferred in, and me, my cousin, and Bubba, and this guy named Randy, we all transferred in. And ever since then, like the culture just been set. Like mm -hmm. everybody just wanted to come play with us because they knew we were like the good, like the best kid in Dallas, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So everybody wanted to come play with us. And then since then, we just been rising and rising and rising and just made a, a championship team at South Oak Cliff and the culture was just set. Well, I, th I think it shows too, right? Like you came from such a successful program and then to come into Texas, you were one of the f like few guys that was able to just walk out on the field, it felt like, and were ready to go. And, mm -hmm. you know, that being said, who were the, the guys on the team that kind of took you under their wing when you got there? Was there anybody that kind of helped you adjust to, to the university? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, so my locker is right next to Michael Taft. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with him. Oh, oh yeah. He's a great leader. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then like Jaron, Jaron Thompson. Yeah. 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 Um, Sweat, Byron Murphy, like yeah. all those guys just welcomed us in. And then like we came in with the mindset, like, yeah, we ready to get on this field. Like we finna change Texas. Like we came in with that mindset. And then they just they bought everybody bought in. And then as y'all see that, it's a new culture. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um looking back on the season, you logged a lot of minutes for this past team. Um <laughs> as you look back. Did you expect to play that much? Was that a surprise to you? Or did mm. you come in with the mindset that I'm going to make an immediate impact? Yeah, I came in with the mindset. Okay. <laughs> I expect, yeah, I came in with the mindset. I, I yeah. think that's, I think that's, I think that's, for a young guy, I mean, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe because he is, he's a DB, you know, DB has, has to have, confidence has to be crazy, mm -hmm. you know, because you can be a hero or zero in any play. And uh, just, Seeing you out there, like you, did you did? What did you learn this year? Like, 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 <laughs> like, so I, like you're there, a freshman, dude. I mean, that's that's big time ball playing against in front of a hundred fans. I mean, it and made some big plays. Yeah, too. And like big you're talking plays. about like game changing plays. Like, and, and we're counting on on this young young kid. Like, 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 what'd you learn this year? Okay, so first it started with Cal Ward. He's like my. My like my DB trainer, he was my yeah, DB yeah. coach at South Oak Cliff. Yeah. So it started with him. Uh, he was a college coach. Um, so basically, he taught us like all the little things that we needed to know going into college, just prepping our mind. Um, yeah. And then like as I said, like Jabbar, EJ, AJ, yeah. they helped me along that way. And then like Coach Joseph, I me, mean, yeah. he taught me the scheme part of ball, like how to know what's coming yeah. and, and things of that nature. And uh, I just put it all together. And then. <laughs> It just all, it all came together. Man, I love that. Just because mm -hmm. it, you can tell he's a real ball player because, you know, some, sometimes uh, some people have his, you know, long out discussion on, you know, really uh, kind of complistic where you're like, all right, you know, I did this, this, and this. And you could tell he's a real ball player. Like, mm -hmm. it's just natural. Like, you move natural out there. Some things that, you know, that some people uh, uh, want to make uh, really complicated, 
you make easy. Yeah. Like you, you, you move really well, smooth. really well. Like you can smooth. tell you're a smart player, man. Very smart. Absolutely. I, I want to dig into that a little bit. So I, I graduated early as well from high school. And one of the biggest adjustments that happened for me was understanding the playbook, right? Mm -hmm. My high school playbook, I knew front and back, but it was only about this big, mm -hmm. right? I got these many plays. This is what I got to do. I got to Texas and it went to about this big. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I didn't know a running back had so many responsibilities as being the best athlete on the field to be able to do all of those things. <laughs> I just got to put more details so y'all can understand it, you know? <laughs> For you, though, Bigger pictures. what was that process like being able to go right after winning state championship game? You enroll, you, you start summer or not summer, but off-season workouts, and then you get prepared for spring ball. What was it like doing those installations and, and even leading up to that with those workouts? Like I said, coming out of South Oak Cliff, like we did those type yeah, of things. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Like in coverages, we had like 28 checks. Like that that was normal. <laughs> like, at the high school level? Well, that probably that's why they want states. Seriously. It was normal. That's why they want well, states. At the high school level, you have one check. <laughs> <laughs> Whole play goes out the window. <laughs> yeah, they lined them with some different coach. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> nah, but yeah, that's, that's, yeah, like motion, like we checking, like. If you, yeah. if you go back and watch tape, like on, you'll see us like talking, yeah. like communicating, yeah. like here come the motion, like we checking that in high school. So like, that's incredible. Uh, coming into college, it was basically like just keeping it simple. Like, man, cover three is cover three, mm -hmm. cover one is cover, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just make it simple checks. All I had to do is just get the different names that yeah, we Yeah, the lingo. Yeah, and it was basically, it was that, really easy. <laughs> that that helps. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, I love that you keep everything simple. Like mm -hmm. you don't overcomplicate anything. That's that's good for being a being a cornerback. Um, um, do you, are you are you a noise talker? I know I know cornerbacks and I know DBs. They talk a lot of, and some of them bag it up. Are you are you Sound a noise like talker? DNs talk a lot. Um, <laughs> last year I, I wasn't really because it was my it was my freshman year. I was just you know getting comfortable getting. I hear you talking out there, but yeah. it ain't, it ain't, you, you're nah, not talking. Nah, it's not really trash talking. Okay, it's okay. like communicating, just, you know, uh, getting the whole team together. You okay, know? okay. Yeah. All right. All right. In your opinion, who gave you the toughest matchup every day at practice? I went side to side, like from one to five. Then you got Jonte Cook coming mm -hmm. in. Then you got DeAndre Moore. Mm -hmm. But oh. Xavier Worthy yep. and, and Adonai Mitchell. They, they, there's some real dudes. <laughs> trust us, we, we know. We, we know how we have a real dude. Like, I'm asking you though, who, who gave you the most fits at and practice why? and yeah. why? I gotta say, Don Mitchell, he got, he makes you think. Yeah. You mm -hmm. gotta think. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 the best part of my game is thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. you could when you can be able to think and, and, and beat me off leverage and and know how to um, close space and use your body, good body control. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, it. <laughs> I gotta say it. so when when yeah. seeing those guys day in and day out, like how did that help you prep for upcoming weeks? Because you know you're not gonna see that type of yeah, talent right. on the other side of the right. field, right? Um, yeah, I just came in like man, I'm gonna challenge these dudes every day. Like, yeah. I'm gonna challenge them whether I win, whether I lose. I'm finna go in here and compete as hard as I can because I know I ain't gonna see nobody like them. Yep, so I was just, yeah. That's the mindset you wanna have, man. I, I look back to, since we're f reflecting on last season and it, it brought up a great point, right? This past class that Sark brought in, y'all as true freshmen, man, you had yourself. Mm -hmm. You had DJ playing in the back, uh, Derek Williams. You had Anthony Hill making plays. You had Sid Baxter making plays. Mm -hmm. The running back Jonte Cook came in and also contributed as well. Like yeah, that's a good y'all was loaded <laughs> with freshmen that hopped on the field. Yeah. And you talked about the mindset that you had coming in. Was that sentiment shared between you and all the other guys that came in in that class? That literally, we literally got in the group and literally told each other, like, we are going to make an impact on this team, mm. regardless if we start, don't start. We get in, we don't get in. We about to make an impact on this team. We're going to change this culture. Mm. Yeah, that was the mm. whole mindset. I love yeah. it. Uh, um, um, culture wise, you keep bringing that word up. Culture. Um, what are some things that um, allow y'all to be close? Like I feel like this uh, year's Texas team, two thousand twenty three, last year's team was so close. Like what? What? What characteristics? Or what? What did y'all adopt to to help that um, that camaraderie? First, it started with like workouts, okay. getting everybody to buy in to go hard and workouts. It started with workouts. Started with Coach Beckton. Mm. Yeah, that was the first thing, and then like. Us just being ourselves in the locker room, getting along well, joking, 
uh, spending spending more time around the facility, okay. around football. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how we. Uh, See that. Well, you guys, you guys did something that hadn't been done at Texas in a while, and to to hang that banner up there as Big Twelve champions and to make the you know the the college football playoff. What does that mean to you now that every time you go back in the stadium, that's going to be hanging up there? It means everything. I mean, that we we were able to like break. I, I guess uh, I don't know how many years it's been like, but break that curse. Like yeah, of know, yeah. people saying that Texas is this, Texas is that, Texas is soft. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Just being able to break that Texas can't win. Texas don't know how to win, uh, mm-hmm. so it means everything. Yeah, yeah you, Texas you, is is Texas, and when you right. said that word, that just right. hit me. I'm like, Texas is tough. Like yeah, that, yeah, that's what it is. Like yeah. we're we're a tough group, and and it ain't dying down. Like we're we're on the mm-hmm. horizon, and and glad for you to be a part of it, man. You're a big right. part Thank of a big piece of it. What's what's been your feeling like getting ready to move conferences? Right, SEC. Everybody talk about is is different. Everybody talk about the level of play and the number of teams that have high caliber athletes. But for you, you got a taste of the Big 12. Now you're getting ready to dabble a little bit in the SEC. What's kind of your thought process and, and feelings toward getting ready to play in that conference? I mean, I, I really, I don't, I mean, I don't want to sound too confident, too cocky. Like, I, I don't think there's a difference. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. You can say, I guess we play week in, week out. But, I mean, like like Coach Stark said, we tough all day. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> tough all yeah. day, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. Is there, coming into college as a freshman, is there anything that gave you difficulties or was there anything that surprised you like your first year at Texas? Time management, like being early. Yeah. I'd say like, I'd normally be like 30 minutes early. Now like being an hour early, mm-hmm. hour 15 early, getting treatment, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Taking care of your body, mm-hmm. things like that. Oh, yeah. So you you already up a class, man. That's what it's yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, okay, with that being said, being the, the kind of quote unquote, one of the main guys that's coming back that had a ton of experience last year, like mm-hmm. you lose Ryan Watts, who probably was a leader in that DB room for you stepping into that role. Is that something that you see yourself doing and helping those young guys learn, you know, hey, on this coverage, we're doing this. Hey, whenever it's this type of look, we're communicating this. Is that something that you feel comfortable stepping into or something that you are already doing? Yes, for sure. Like I, this whole off season, I've been prepping like, the younger guys. Who so far has impressed you that's a, that's a name that somebody should look out for that nobody <laughs> knows yet? I'd probably say Gavin Holmes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gavin Holmes. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Um, who, do you, who do you admire? When, it's, when you talk about playing cornerback, everybody has their um, um, someone that inspires them to be better and, and that they want to emulate their game out the It's probably a running back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, the running back days are old. <laughs> who, who, who's that guy? I mean, it could be old. It could be somebody current. Uh, um, who, who is that person? You say, you know what? This is what I model my game after. I got two guys because I, I, I like to put, I got two different buckets, like the playmaking bucket and then the technique. Mm. Dog side, yeah. um, Darrell Revis and Charles Wilson. Oh, okay, Woo. well you can't go okay. wrong with either one. I'm, I'm trying to figure out which one is in the train. Who dog? Who the technique? Who just plays? They both fit. Oh, the right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah who, who's the technique? Who's the technician in that? I, that I'll say Darrell the technician. Okay, okay. okay. And yeah. then like, yeah. like that, that. I can see maker. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, when it's time to make the play. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with Charles Wilson. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've had a ton of football talk, right? But give me something that you like doing outside of football. For for me, I was bowling in college, boy. We used to have some tournaments, boy. We used to put push-ups on the line, everything. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We, nah, was, nah, we, we slide bowling in Dallas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really don't like do a lot. Yeah. I mean, like, now I got a daughter. So I like right, to spend time with daughter. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. cool. How old is she? Seven months. Oh, Let's go. Wow. That's awesome. That's Come awesome, on, man. I like spend time with my daughter, um, family. I mean, I, yeah, I like yeah. being with the community when I'm not in football. Yeah. I mean, like, football is one thing, but like family, community, religion, all that yeah. is another thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I like doing stuff like that. I mean, giving to the charity, giving back to the community. Like yesterday, I just went to the uh, mosque here in uh, Austin. Nice. And donated money, prayed with them. Just nice. little stuff like that. That's, That's um, kind of going back to your daughter, as somebody that doesn't have any kids yet, 
I hear whenever you have a kid, especially a daughter, there's a different set of motivation that kind of like kicks in in your mm-hmm. life. Can nice. you like, is that something that you felt as soon as you had a daughter? Yeah. See, like I, I found out that I was having a daughter like a, a, a month before I came to Texas. Mm. So that was part of the. Oh, that's why you was out the there balling. Like, <laughs> like, that's about grown. Yeah, I was part of the school too. So yeah, that's what's up. Nah, that, it's it's a different motivation, and then it's it's another life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that you got to take care of. Yeah, definitely. Man, speaking of, speaking of the family side, I think a lot of a lot of people got real familiar with your family in the in the playoff game when you matched up with Jabbar at, on Washington. Talk a little bit about y'all's relationship and what that was like going up against him. So or not really going against him, but going against his team. I yes. Guess. So Jabbar was the first person to actually train me to play DB. So like, oh, that's loud. man, we sitting there in the backyard. He making us this thing called inching, <laughs> inching back. Like we inching like 10, 10 reps. Ooh. For like 15 yards, 20 yards, Ooh. itching back. I know the like, quads was on fire. Yeah. fire. <laughs> Sideways, same thing, ladder, <laughs> 10 a foot, like hot in the summer. <laughs> like he the first person up. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so like I, I always grew up with him too, like since I was like four years old, five years old. His dad is actually the one who introduced me into football. So, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah, we grew up like that's really like my brother on some on some stuff. So. So Malik, looking back at the Sugar Bowl, you got both you and your cousin playing against each other. I can only imagine y'all had so many people coming out the woodworks asking for tickets. What did that situation look like for y'all? How many tickets did you have to pull? Man, we had like a, um, you know, it was around like Christmas. So we had a, oh, yeah. like a four, four day, um, four day break before we went out of town in New Orleans. Uh-huh. Man, like the family at camp, <laughs> man, it's like. And our family is huge, like families of 10. <laughs> like, hey, so we I, heard when you was listed off the cousins. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> families of 10, like this half of the family asking me, half of the family asking. I'm like, man, it's New Orleans. Y'all just got sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> it's New Orleans. Uh, I love it. Jabbar that. probably got like 20 something tickets. I probably got like 15. Like, it, oh, man. And then the rest snuck in. <laughs> it was crazy. I wonder what the dynamic was like with who am I, like, as a family member trying to decide who am I going to ask? Am I going to ask Malik or am I going to ask Jabbar? Like, that's, that's interesting. Or we're I really think, both. yeah. Asking both to see who's going to respond think, first. Yeah, I really think the whole Hedge family was asking yeah. both. And yeah. whoever, whoever was able to get one got one. Yeah. Yeah. The word so. snuck in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, what does uh, what do you do pregame? What's your routine or kind of rituals that you do? Night before, make a prayer. I wake up in the morning. You know they got breakfast for us, yeah. mm-hmm. but I pray before I eat breakfast. Um, might listen to a little music, get a little music. But I always feel like I'm in the room with Gavin. Like I'm always something like, can no music save you today? <laughs> <laughs> I probably get like a little slight meal in. Uh, I'm hydrating a lot, uh, and then like man, I'm not gonna lie, I, I be like I be laughing like, <laughs> like I'm gonna go out here and like like I'm gonna do this. Yeah, right. yeah. I just go out there and play, but my head my head be on like I know how to flip that switch like when it's time to go it's time to go. But I also be having like a little paper like where I got like little notes that I can keep mm-hmm. reading off of and, and 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 looking at before the game. And then when it's time to go, I mean I just you know, y'all see me, I just get get on my knees and take make a prayer. Yeah. They play that music before the game, kick that ball off, yeah. I, it's Locked time to in. go. Yeah. <laughs> Locked Locked in. In. yeah. I want I want to ask you one more. I, uh, I've heard you talk about it in your faith and how you are big in the community and going to go visit the mosque as well what what has that meant for you and your upbringing and how it's gotten you to the point where you are today god is everything i mean god is first Mm -hmm. before anything like god is the reason why you're able to go out there and play and uh showcase your ability and and, and things of that nature so um we take god very seriously Mm -hmm. uh in my upbringing uh he always comes first and uh yeah well let me ask you this um before we let you go Obviously made a huge impact your freshman year or heading into year two. What are some improvements that you feel like you can make in your game? Uh, dominating for four quarters. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like dominating for four quarters and dominating like dominating. Like 
Not letting your dominate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, love uh, it. I no. can't even follow that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah seriously. That's a good one to end on. Yeah. One for one reception for <laughs> four <laughs> yards. Four <laughs> not even one exactly. I'm not 16 even targets. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Malik, thanks so much, man. It was fun to have you out. We'd love to have you back sometime later in the year. And uh, looking forward to the season, man. Hook them. Yeah, I appreciate you, honorary RB, baby. Yeah. <laughs>